Hi guys, how's everybody doing today? Let me know where you're from. I'm so glad to see a lot of you. I see people that I always see. This is wonderful. Hi, Lisa. Tell me where you're from, guys. I know so many of you from being in webinar. This is great. Shanghai, that's wonderful. Jerry, hey, Jerry. And Sophie and Jade and Lisa. This is great. Who else? We're going to get started. We're going to go to South Carolina today, guys. Hi, William. Larry. Oh, this is great. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and start. Hi, Tony. Lots of familiar faces. I'm so glad you guys are here with me today. We're going to talk. About, okay, Yolanda, that's right. You're from North America, too. You're in North America right now. That's wonderful. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys are having a good winter holiday. I guess you're getting ready to go back to school if you haven't already. So happy new year to you. And the year of the ox is going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and start talking about South Carolina. I've got a couple things planned for you. A lot of South Carolina Carolina is a state, okay? It's a state by me in Virginia. I've been there many, many times. I'm going to be going there in a couple of weeks again because my son goes to school in that state. It's about eight hours from me. But much of um, South Carolina is almost like a lot of the Everglades. I talked about a couple of weeks ago. A lot of swampy areas, a lot of areas for the beach. It's a warmer climate. Like right now, even if you go there, it's not that cold, even though it's the winter. Let me show you. A little bit about where it's at so you know what we're talking about here whoops my powerpoint back here and let me show you exactly where it is in the united states so i've got a map here okay so here's the united states i'm over here in virginia and down here is south carolina it's that red state okay it's called the palmetto state because the palm tree is the state flower or the state tree Okay, so it's right there. So here's Florida. That's very warm. Y Yolanda's in Canada, which is up here. So you kind of get where you're at now if you're in the United States. So this is the Atlantic Ocean. You guys are more about the Pacific Ocean, right? All right, let me go ahead and show you. Um, like I said, I've been there. This is me and my son. This is a big palm tree. I go there a lot. He goes to college there. OK, and we go to an area called Charleston, which is more by the coast, by the beach. But the capital is Columbia. That's the state capital. That's kind of the middle of the state. So if I took that state of South Carolina and I broke it in little, little puzzle pieces, Columbia is the very middle. OK, that's where Columbia is. And this is the big state capital house, lots of city buildings. It's still very pretty. It's very warm, lots of palm trees. It's by the beach lots of history in South Carolina. Because if you know anything about American history, you know that we had a civil war where the northern states were against the southern states. Okay, and that's one of the southern states. It was lots of big um, civil war battlefields are still there, lots of monuments. Very beautiful though. Very, very fun state to be in. All right, let me show you some of our book. Let's go on to South Carolina. All right, so you guys already know where it's at because I just showed you. Here it is again. Okay, geography. That means maps, right? Let's explore South Carolina. South Carolina is in the southeastern part of the United States. It is next to the Atlantic Ocean. So here's my country again. Down here is the south. If you have a compass, up here is the north. Over here is the west, here is the east. So it's a southeastern state because it's down here, but it's a little more over here towards the Atlantic Ocean, okay? Has anybody ever been to, to the United States? Tell me in the chat if you've even been, maybe you've been to California or maybe you've been over here. And that's great, that's still the United States. And it's fine if you haven't, maybe you'll go one day. I hope to go to China one day. Oh, hi, Ellie, glad you're here. Okay, and... Lisa has, Joanna has, Tony, no, William. Oh, William has been to Florida. So you've been down to New York City, the Big Apple. I did a great webinar on New York City. That's a fun place to be. So that's all. You've been on the East Coast then, William. Okay. Oh, Yolanda. Okay. So you guys are a little familiar with the United States and your compass direction. North is up here, south, even though it's called South Carolina because the state right above it is North Carolina. And I live kind of on the Virginia-North Carolina line right there. But there's South Carolina. Then you get into Georgia and then Florida. Okay. And like I said, the very middle of the state is Columbia. Um, the place where I go every couple of weeks is Charleston right down here. Okay. 
cities. Columbia is the capital of South Carolina, like I just showed you guys. It is the largest city in the state. Charleston is a well-known city. These cities have many large historic houses, and they also have a lot of art museums. Look at this number. About 120,000 people live in Columbia, just that state capital. Okay, like we have a country capital, Washington, D.C. You have Beijing. This is a, every state has their own capital city. Land. The land next to the Atlantic Ocean is flat. There's not many mountains where I live. The middle of the state is hilly. That means not big mountains, but not flat. The Northwest has mountains. The state has many swamps. It also has several rivers. Table Rock State Park is in the northern part of South Carolina and has hills and mountains, just a few hills, okay? We talked about swamps when I talked about the Everglades with alligators, kind of like freshwater. They're not salty and they're kind of not as deep. That's a swamp, okay? All right. Good, William. Yeah, so in Shanghai, there's three, 300,000 people. So just in Columbia, there's 120,000 people in that little area. All right. All right. Let me show you a little bit about um, South Carolina. These are the top 10 th fun things to do in South Carolina before I get into some of the history. I want to know what's fun there, right? Okay. And this is where I go every couple weeks is Charleston. I'll show you a little more about this, but look how beautiful some of these houses are. There's pink houses and blue houses and green houses and all that. So all kinds of fun things to do in Charleston. Historic because lots of Civil War history is there. It's a golfer's paradise. People love to play golf. See the lighthouse, isn't that beautiful? This is in Hilton Head. This is right by Charleston. Lots of people play, retire there. That means they get older and they don't work anymore and they retire to uh, South Carolina or Hilton Head Island, which is one little island off the coast of, of South Carolina. miles of coastline that means the beach runs for 60 miles it's called Myrtle Beach it's a fun place to go there's the state capitol that we just talked about and I showed you the picture of the big buildings there A basin is a, a dugout area that sometimes fills with water. So this is called Ace Basin. See how some of the buildings in this state are purple and blue and pink. It's very beautiful. This place has a trolley, which is like a railroad on the street. Bridge. This is where I'm going to show you pictures of in just a second. I've been there. This is by Charleston. This is a Civil War area where they had a big battle. Look how beautiful. Haha. Uh -huh. Fun. And people call it the low country or southern living because the low country means it's very flat. Like I said, there's not a lot of mountains there. All right, let me go back to our book so we can see a little bit of history. Okay, so let me go back to a couple places. Um, 
go back to our book. And we just talked about the land and the basins and the mountains. What's a basin again? Do you guys remember what I said a basin was? Show me in the chat if you know what a basin is. It's kind of the opposite of a mountain. Yeah, Lisa, it is beautiful. William, yes, that's where the Civil War began. Very smart. A, a dug out hole with water. Good, Yolanda. You guys are great. All right, let's go back. We talked about the swamps. Plants and animals. Here's the palm tree. They call this a palmetto tree, but it's a palm tree for short. Also, your hand is a is the palm of your hand. South Carolina has 46 state parks. The state tree is the palmetto tree. It has green palms, which are large leaves. They call these leaves and they're kind of flat out. The state bird is the Carolina wren. Little guy, real little guy. Many people in the state have flower gardens. The state flower is the yellow jasmine. Jessamine. It's very smells very good. Okay, people and work. This is fun. About 4.5 million people live in South Carolina. Some people work in healthcare and tourism. That means they want to attract people to come visit their state and stay in their hotels and golf and go to the beach. Manufacturing is important in the state. Workers make items such as clothes, paper products, and chemicals. Some people work on farms. Farmers in South Carolina raise chickens and cattle. Cattle or cows. Some important Carolina, Carolina crops are tobacco, corn, cotton, and peaches. Do you know what tobacco is? Tobacco is what's put in cigarettes that people smoke. North Carolina and South Carolina, those two states, grow most of the world's tobacco. This looks like a fun little ride, doesn't it? History. People from Europe began to settle in the area that is now South Carolina in the 1500s. About 30 Native American tribes already lived there. Most European settlements began in the 1600s. South Carolina became the eighth state on May 23rd, 1788. Okay, we'll stop there for a second. Lots of history there. So it started out with the Indians already being there and Europeans like the British from England arrived there. Let me show you um, about the revolutionary days in um, South Carolina. And remember the American Revolution was when the Americans were against England or the British. So it's called Revolutionary War Days. You can go there and you can visit dis different battlefields. Set your sights on somewhere unexpected and discover what's waiting for you there is so much more than just a change of scenery. Wow. Surround yourself with centuries of rich Southern culture and come to find a place where you can make a little history of your own. Welcome to South Carolina, where what you discover is up to you. South Carolina, just right. Okay, that's the old, um, the old, USA flag, right? We just had the colonies. So that's kind of cool. Let me show you a little bit about what I've got about the American Revolution and lots and lots of battlefields there as well. Remember, the British could get really close to the coast there because it's the beach. So what a great place to, um, to try to attack Americans or the 13 colonies, right? You're right there in the beach. You come right from England off the Atlantic Ocean and boom, you're right there in their backyard, their backyard. Okay, so here's our state again. We have lots of history in South Carolina all the way from the American Revolution against the British. You guys can see some women up there all the way to the Civil War. And this is one of the places that I just showed you in the, in the beginning video. And this is my son over in um, Fort Sumter and Fort, Mul Fort Moultrie. A fort is a place where you would stand behind and you would attack the enemy. So see the cannons here? This is the exact place. And this is him looking over at um, some of the area that has the Civil War history like I just told you about. Here's Fort Moultrie. I'm gonna show you something about that. These are pictures I took when I was there. Here's a cannon over the, fall, the fort, aiming at the water to hit the British. And that's actually where we had the Civil War begin. So not the British, the Northerners. Let me show you a little bit about that from our book. And a little bit about um,
South Carolina and the Civil War. Remember the North against the South? This is our state, South Carolina. One of the original 13 colonies in the site of over 200 engagements during the American Revolution, South Carolina was the first state to secede from the United States in December 1860. That means they were the first state to go, we're not going to be part of this anymore. Secession escalated into armed conflict on April 12, 1861, when Confederate troops under Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard fired on Major Robert Anderson's Union garrison at Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor. This action precipitated. That's the pictures that I just showed you. Not only civil war, but a nearly four year struggle by the Union to recapture the city. At the outbreak of the Civil War, the Palmetto State had a population of approximately 700,000, including 402,000 enslaved persons. Roughly 60,000 South Carolinians served in the eastern and western theaters of the war. Richard Anderson, James Longstreet, and Wade Hampton rose to Corps command. Three South Carolina generals were killed in battle. Maxie Gregg at Fredericksburg, States Rights Gist at Franklin, and Micah Jenkins by Friendly Fire at the Wilderness. Joseph Kershaw led one of the most prominent brigades in Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Among Kershaw's ranks was Richard Kirkland, who would be immortalized as the Angel of Marie's Heights at Fredericksburg for giving aid to wounded Union soldiers. Operations around Charleston included some of the most famous episodes of Naval and Civil War history. On the night of February 17, 1864, the H.L. Hunley torpedoed and sank the USS Housatonic. On its return to Confederate-held Sullivan's Island, the Hunley was lost, but was raised from the sea in 2000 and can be visited in Charleston. Wow, look at that. That's from the Civil War, guys. And they raised that up out of the water. Today, the first African-American regiment to be raised in the North, the 54th Massachusetts, stormed Fort Wagner, part of the Charleston Harbor defenses on Morris Island, on July 18, 1863. In early 1865, Union General William T. Sherman marched through the state in his Carolinas campaign and on February 17, 1865, took the capital city of Columbia, my hometown. That's the state capital now, Columbia, that I showed you. Today, South Carolina boasts a number of destinations related to its Civil War past, including Fort Sumter, Fort Moultrie, Magnolia Cemetery, the South Carolina State House, the South Carolina Confederate Relic Room and Military Museum, and the South Carolina State Museum. Lots of cool things in South Carolina to see if you like history. Okay. Okay, so they were, they were, the Union was the North and the Confederates were the South. Lots of open space. Yes. Beautiful. All right. Let me show you one more thing. This is a walking tour of Charleston. So this is how um, it looks today. And like they said, Charleston was a big area that had lots and lots of fighting in the Civil War. It's beautiful. It's nice and warm. This is walking down different parts of Charleston. I'll just show you a little bit of this. With walks of Charleston, and today we're going to be walking with travel and leisure, exploring some of the beautiful alleys and hidden passages that are available here in historic Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston enjoys 350 years of history. We have the largest historic district in the country, and we have more buildings of the National Historic Register than any other city in the country. A historic register is where you would put your house in a big book for people all over the world to see. And it would say, okay, this is what happened at my home in the 1600s or the 1800s or the 1900s. And people go, oh, let's go visit. So historic registry has all the special houses in the whole country on it. And it has more, and Charleston has more than any other city. This is a big bridge that I go on. You can see all the cables on it. First, before we get started, I want to introduce my favorite building here in the city, the Old Exchange and Provost Dungeon. This building is wildly important based on a couple of facts. Number one, it represents the very last official British building built on American soil, completed in 1771, wow. just four years prior to the outbreak of the Revolutionary War. We're here at a location known as Philadelphia Alley. And Philadelphia Alley, I think, 
is probably the most picturesque of all the alleyways that we offer here in historic Charleston, South Carolina. Another name that Philadelphia Alley is known as, it went by the name of Dooler's Alley. And this is where two men would settle their differences by marching off 10 paces, uh -oh. turning, counting to three, and firing dueling. So they would duel in that alley. That means I don't want to, I don't like you, so I have my gun and you have your gun, and we'd walk away from each other 10 paces, walk 10 steps, and then we turn around, and whoever fires first is the winner. I don't want to be involved in that fight, but they used to do that right in that alley, he said. ...pistols at each other in order to settle their differences. Benjamin Franklin considered dueling to be a barbaric act, and we found that dueling was largely outlawed in young America after the end of the Revolutionary War. South Carolina didn't get around to banning dueling until 1888. We're here in Unity Alley, and behind me is the old historic McCrady's Tavern. One of the features of McCrady's Tavern was the formal dining room located on the second story known as the Long Room. And the Long Room would host a beautiful banquet for a very special guest. In 1791, President George Washington came to Charleston. Here at McCrady's, a 30-course meal was offered to the wow. president. And I can't imagine what a 30-course meal would have consisted of, but I have a feeling the president could have handled those calories. We find ourselves here on Chalmers Street, and Chalmers Street happens to be the only street in the city that's paved entirely in these English river rocks that we call ballast stones. Empty sailing ships crossing over the Atlantic needed some weight in them to maintain stability at sea. When those ships arrived, rather than taking these rocks and tossing them into the harbor, we retained them and we started to pave our streets. Located behind me is arguably the oldest house Charleston offers, the beautiful pink house from 1696. Some people argue really wasn't a house. It was actually built as a tavern, and the oldest designation of a house here in the city goes to the Dr. John Linning house from 1711. But I like to give credit where credit's due and say, pink house, you've been around for a long time. The pink house, weighing in at 1,010 square feet, doesn't offer a whole lot of space to enjoy. And I certainly hope that the new owner of the pink house isn't a very tall individual because the bedroom that's located on the second story has a ceiling height of five feet, six no inches ceilings. tall. You We're here on Elliott Street, and Elliott Street, one of these areas of the city where we were found during the pre-revolutionary times, our colonial period. So lots of things there before even the Revolutionary War are still standing. Let me know in the chat if you'd like to go there. Would that be fun for you? It looks beautiful there, doesn't it? Yeah, it's great. Like I said, I go about every two or three weeks, and it takes me about seven hours to get there if I drive from my house in Virginia to South Carolina, but it's absolutely beautiful. All right, let's go back to our book, and we'll go back to some more stuff in a second. Oops, let me get our book back. And let's talk about some things that are going on today in South Carolina. So that's just one little city called Charleston. South Carolina has many museums. They show art, items from wars and battles in the state's history. Many people also visit the state's beaches. South Carolina's many golf courses are popular too. Remember I just told you people like to go there and retire and play golf? Famous people. Jesse Jackson is a civil rights leader who was born in South Carolina. Boxer Joe Frazier was born in South Carolina too. Shoeless Joe Jackson was a famous baseball player from South Carolina. And basketball player Kevin Garrett was also born in the state. He played for the, played for the Celtics, which is in Boston. Here's our famous places we just talked about. Many battles of the American Revolution were fought in South Carolina. Visitors can see people act some of these battles out. We saw that little video. The first shot of the U.S. Civil War was fired at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. And I just showed you that was where I was. I showed you a picture of the cannons around my son. Myrtle Beach is a popular vacation spot. We just talked about that in the video. And many colorful homes and buildings line the coast in Myrtle Beach. See the hotels too? In one city in South Carolina, they're pink and blue and yellow. 
Okay, let me go back, show you a little bit more about the Southern hospitality of South Carolina. Southern hospitality means people might see you and just go, hey, how are you doing today? Um, very nice people. Um, Southern hospitality means if you say, I'm hungry, where should I go eat? And they go, oh, let me tell you, I'll even take you there right down the street. There's a great place you can eat. Very, very warm and nice people. All right, let me show you a little more about the Civil War in South Carolina. And then we'll go back to our fun things, like there's lots of dancing and good food and seafood there and golf. Okay, so this is more about the Civil War where I just showed you I was in Charleston. Mm -hmm. When the Civil War began, the North's strategy was made of three major ideas. First, they wanted to block off southern ports. This would cut off supplies coming in from Europe. Then they wanted to control the Mississippi River. This would break the Confederacy into two separate parts. You guys see that's in the middle of the country. South Carolina's over here. Finally, they wanted to destroy transportation and communication lines throughout the South. The South knew that winning a war against the North would be difficult. They planned on fighting a defensive war. They wanted to make the North fight until they got tired of fighting. They planned to rely on supplies from Europe to keep their economy going during this time. Most of the battles in the Civil War took place in Virginia or along the Mississippi River. But there was some fighting that occurred in South Carolina during the war. The first shots of the war were fired on Fort Sumter. Fort Sumter was a Union military base on a small island in Charleston Harbor. Northern troops attempted to bring supplies to the soldiers who were stationed there. Okay, this is the place I just showed you in the PowerPoint. This led to a battle with the Confederates. But the Union Army still maintained a strong presence in the state. Port Royal Sound was near Hilton Head. This area was taken from the Confederate Army and remained in Union control throughout the rest of the war. The Union's main goal in South Carolina was to prevent the import and export of goods through the state's many ports. So they wanted to stop everything from coming into Charleston because that was a nice place right off the Atlantic Ocean. We can get things from Europe. And then in the Union in the North said, ha ha, let's take Charleston. So they really can't get their goods. At first, the Confederates thought this might actually help them. They hoped that when European countries were not able to receive cash crops like cotton, that maybe they would decide to join the war on the side of the Confederates. This did not happen. European countries just looked for cotton and other cash crops in other parts of the world instead. The northern blockade of southern ports seemed to be an effective strategy. The Confederates tried anything they could to break these blockades. They used ships called blockade runners to break through the Union Navy. These rarely worked. They even tried using new technology to get around the blockades as well. The Hunley was a Confederate submarine that- This is the submarine I just showed you that they raised up and you can see in the museum now. Was used during this time. It successfully attacked a Union ship, but it failed to return back to its base after the event. At the time, no one was really sure what exactly happened to the Hunley. It was not until over a hundred years later that it was found at the bottom of Charleston Harbor. That's pretty neat. Okay, so that's some about how the Civil War in Charleston, South Carolina were affected. Let me show you some fun things also. Uh, let me show you one more thing about the Battle of Fort Sumter. Let me get in my PowerPoint and show you that picture one more time. Okay, so lots of war happened there long ago. Okay, so here is where I was at Fort Moultrie. That's looking out over the edge into, um, this is looking at Fort Sumter out here, the picture you just saw in the video, okay, where they wanted to stop, you know, they wanted to overtake that area. So this is, these are pictures I took from where I was looking at it. And you can take tours of that area too. Okay, here's some more of the area. See how low it is? It's called the low country. There's no mountains. And this is the perfect place that they wanted to, you know, hurt the the Confederate soldiers, right? Let's go and hit them from the, from the, um, from the water.
Okay, so this is also a place where there was the American Revolution, okay, and the Civil War, like I showed you. And this is just a map I brought up to show you guys like the red states are the slave states, the southern states. I'm in Virginia, they're South Carolina, okay. The blue states are the Union or the North. So you could see that, All right? Let me show you one more thing on that and we'll show you some fun stuff. This is one more thing about the Civil War in that area. The odds of surviving 34 hours straight above the fort was built following the War of 1812 and is part of a chain of fortifications along the southern coast of the USA. Fort Sumter itself is placed just off the coast next to Charleston, South Carolina. In November 1860, Abraham Lincoln was voted in as President of the United States, in doing so setting off the secession crisis. Being a federal soldier in a fort in the South became a bit of a bad thing as tensions raised with South Carolina seceding in December 1860. This was quickly followed by six more states in February 1861. In the growing tensions, commander of Fort Moultrie, Major Robert Anderson, began to ask the War Department for reinforcements and began to make plans to move his men from the hard to defend Moultrie to either Castle Pick. Remember I just showed you that South Carolina was the first state to secede, that means break away, and then the other states said, us too, us too, us too, and that's how the Civil War started. So this is exactly where the Civil War began. All the then unfinished Fort Sumter. On the 26th of December 1860, Anderson put his plan into action and transported his troops and their families via rowboat to Fort Sumter. The winter of 1860 and 1861 was tough as supplies were limited and fuel for heat was rationed. South Carolina Governor Francis Pickens essentially started a siege on Sumter by controlling all communications and supplies to the fort. The on the 9th of January 1861, the steamer Starved the West attempted to resupply the fort with reinforcements, but was forced away due to being fired upon by Pickens. Anderson was under the strict orders not to fire unless in defence of the fort directly, so was unable to prevent the Star of the West from turning away and sailing off. On the 1st of March, Brigadier General PGT Bergerard arrived in Charleston with the orders from Confederate President Jefferson Davis to take control of the military situation. Immediately, Bergerard continued to mass weapons aimed at the fort. Unsurprisingly, tensions around the fort started to reach fever pitch. As a weird twist of fate, Bergerard had been a gunnery student of Anderson and the two had been good friends at West Point. Just after Abraham Lincoln's inauguration, Anderson on the 8th of March 1861 reported that he had less than six weeks of food supplies left. The garrison spent several weeks held up in the fort not knowing if any relief would materialise from the federal government. By April, the Union troops had positioned 60 guns, but they lacked the numbers wow. of men needed to make use of them. The fort consisted of three levels of enclosed gun positions. Most of the second level was unoccupied and the this rest- This is the picture I just showed you of the fort's levels were barely manned. Anderson only boasted around 80 men for the defence of the fort. The original purpose of the fort was to provide defence against a seaborne attack and because of this Sumter That's where all those cannons were firing. ...lacked the ability to properly repel an attack from Bergerard's forces. On the 11th of April, Bergerard sent out an envoy to Sumter to demand the fort to surrender. Anderson took a vote from his men and promptly returned a vote of no. Upon receiving the news of the fort's refusal to surrender, Bergerard began to assess how much food Anderson had left and attempted to predict how long the garrison could hold out. At 1am on the 12th of April, Bergerard sent aides Colonel James Chesson, Colonel Chesson and Captain yeah. Stephen D. Lee to Anderson with a message stating... If you state the time in which you evacuate Fort Sumter and agree in the meantime that you will not use your guns against us unless ours shall be employed against Fort Sumter, we will abstain from firing upon you. Anderson replied stating that he would vacate the fort by noon April the 15th unless he received new orders or supplies from the federal government. Colonel Chestnut considered this to be too long and replied to Anderson at 3.20am stating... Sir, by the authority of Brigadier General so Bergerard, telling him, you better go ahead and leave or we're going to attack you. And that's how the Civil War began. OK, let me show you some fun stuff about South Carolina and the beaches. Let me show you my PowerPoint. Let me move away from Fort Sumter and Fort, Fort Moultrie. Like I showed you, here's some other pretty houses. And let me show you some other stuff about the seafood and the things that they eat. 
Here's a long pier at Myrtle Beach. Here's some more. It looks like the Everglades we talked about. It's just air, swampy areas with lots of wildlife. And here's some beautiful, beautiful houses with palm trees. And we've got uh, the Citadel is there where my son attends. This is one of the major colleges in the country and in Charleston. This is what his college campus looks like. So lots, and these are pictures I took. These are lots and lots of beautiful trees there. And like I said, the palmetto tree is the state tree. Their leaves are long, long little strips like a palm tree instead of leaves like on another tree. And I just showed you people like to golf and retire there. You can go golfing at Hilton Head. There's a big lighthouse. That's what shows it's, it's there now as just kind of a decoration. But that is where, what shows people not to hit the coast if it's dark out. They have that light burning all the time. And here's some big golf courses. And Hilton Head is right off an island right off the coast of South Carolina. There's also lots of dancing. It's called shag dancing. And it's just fun dancing that people go to dance classes and learn about, learn how to do. It's great exercise. I'm going to show you that. And then I'll show you the food that lots of South Carolinians eat. That's a person that lives in South Carolina. Um, here we go. Here's some people dancing, the shag dancing to different fun music. It's not really like rock and roll, but it's just fun. Shag is our state dance. This is where it started. It started right here on the Grand Strand. This is where they, all the lifeguards and waitresses and everybody back in the 40s and 50s are the ones that created it. We didn't try to create a new dance. We just got tired of the herky-jerky stuff with the jitterbug and throwing people around. We started dancing like we talked to girls at the beach, you know, laid back, slow and easy. All these dancers dancing at the championships are dancing on the shoulders of those original cats. It's exciting, it's exhilarating, but also it's, it gets sexy, it's smooth. It's easy for us to connect with each other and to connect with the music and the history of what it is to be doing this dance. It's like there's nobody else on the floor. It really is, or in the room, mm. it's just us. It's just us dancing, yeah. and that's, that's been the really coolest thing. It's a fun dance. And it was also one of the greatest ways in the world to meet girls. It's a very creative dance. It's not just one line dance where you do the same thing. You can make up a step every week if you want and go out there and show it off. And people do that. It is a very local, regional dance. And we do it because we love it and it's home and it's part of us. It's a connection to my past and my family that I wouldn't have otherwise. The kids are keeping it alive. You know, there's 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds, they're killing it. They're as good as the dancers I remember, you know, in the 50s when I thought they were the top dancers. I started shagging at the age of 10, and I just fell in love with, you know, the people, the socialization, the dance. It's a wonderful place to be, you know, down at the beach and shagging. That's why I love doing it. It's wonderful to get a chance to be. Doesn't that look fun? I think it looks fun. Who'd like to do that? I'm sure you guys would like to do that. That's fun. Fun stuff. Okay, let me show you a little more about the seafood you can get there. Oysters and crabs, great seafood. Okay, so there's lots of seafood that you can catch there because it's by the ocean, right? You get things from the Atlantic Ocean like fish, shrimp, oysters, and crab. Okay, here's oysters on the half shell. Let me show you that. And then we'll go right to some of the plantations that are there. Okay, see these big boats that go out of the harbor there to the Atlantic Ocean? The heyday of shrimping was probably in the 1980s in Shem Creek. I'm not sure what the exact number was of shrimp boats, something on the order of 80 or 100 boats. Since then, there's been a virtual collapse. I believe there's now 14 trawlers 
uh, operating out of Shem Creek. The single biggest problem is imports. 90% of seafood consumed in the United States is imported. That has just devastated the, the business. But one of the things we as Tarvin Seafood has tried to do is make our catch local. Sell it locally, and that way we're somewhat insulated from those price variations. And because we're small, there's no reason we can't do that. They have their own shrimping business for the restaurant. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I hope you're excited by the time we get out there. Yeah, I bet. No, I'm ready for it. Good. They're going to go Only on the boat. So I've known the shrimp and the other bycatch. Um, so when nets go in, there's these big metal cages that keep the desirable game fish out, and more importantly, things like sea turtles. And then the big wooden doors will separate, and the nets will drag between them and catch, hopefully, shrimp. Shrimping is a very unpredictable business. There are a number of factors at play. So pretty fun to go out there and do that. Would you like to do that? That'd be hard work, very hard work. All right, let me show you a little bit about some of the other beautiful homes that are there. that are very, very old. And I have way too much to show you guys. We could talk about this for a long time. They're called plantations. They're from the old times. It looks like going back in time down these roads to these big homes. Let me show you something on that. Lots of those in South Carolina. Um, let's show you this, this guy talking. Well, hello and welcome. My name is Drayton Hasty, and I'm a member of the 12th generation that has owned this lovely plantation and historic landmark for over 300 years now. I welcome you today to join me in taking a wonderful tour of our gardens, but also realize that even though we are the garden of dreams and one of the oldest and most famous gardens in America, we have much, much more that we offer. We have some of the most important history tours given anywhere, and we look forward to your visit You'll see, just as hundreds of thousands of people have seen, why we are South Carolina's most popular plantation experience. Look how beautiful this is. Breathtaking natural beauty timeless southern charm, and the fabled settings etched in the page of history. This is Magnolia Plantation and Gardens. In a picturesque landscape overlooking the winding banks of the Ashley River, Magnolia is a showcase of historic roots. Beautiful. One of Charleston's top tourist and wedding destinations. They call these weeping willow trees. They're found in the South. And Southern culture and its majestic romantic gardens have earned its recognition as one of America's most beautiful gardens and the esteem of visitors from around the world. Founded by Thomas and Ann Drayton in 16... That was a one house. Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful there. So between all the other history things, you can go there and just look at the gardens, one of the biggest gardens in the world, she said. And let me show you another destination that has lots of golfers that go there, people that play golf. Lighthouse. Okay, that was the lighthouse we just talked about. Lots of seafood, they're opening crab legs there. 
oysters. That's pretty good zip lining. I've done that too. That's pretty fun. All right. Let me show you a couple things before we take some questions. Here's some beautiful um, houses. Let me just show you this before we take some questions. Since we finished our book, beautiful blue, pink houses. Charleston there by the naval area that's the big bridge I showed you there's also a little bit of hills like our book talked about but not giant mountains beautiful scenery there's where I just showed you the pictures I was at in Fort Sumter where the Civil War began okay. lots of places to see lots of things to do all right, let me show you one last thing here that was actually in Chinese. And do, 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 do. I'll show you about 10 seconds of this. And then I'm gonna show you one more little thing and we'll take questions. This is about South Carolina. Wei Show you one more little thing. And in Chinese, yes. And then last thing I want to show you is this guy talking about South Carolina. And then we'll take questions. Do you know a lot about the state of South Carolina? Well, you're going to learn some cool facts. Lots of fun. All right, we're going to start off with this question. Where is South Carolina? It's a pretty important question to answer. Where is South Carolina? Here is a map of the United States. Now, where is South Carolina? South Carolina is right down here. This is where South Carolina is on the United States map. This is a region of the United States called the Southeast. South Carolina is in the southeast region of the United States. South Carolina is on the east coast. In fact, to the east is the Atlantic Ocean. And there are. Remember, I talked to you. I said I live right here in Virginia, right on the line there. There's North Carolina, there's South Carolina. There are only two states that border South Carolina, just two states. There's North Carolina to the north, which makes sense, you know, North Carolina, you know, north of South Carolina. And then Georgia. And then the state of Georgia is to the west and to the south. The state of Georgia is pretty huge. It covers both the west and the south. So there's only two states bordering South Carolina. 
North Carolina, and Georgia. To review, South Carolina, Carolina yeah. almost looks like a heart. Yeah. Driving in the woods. <laughs> Why am I? The sex house hot. Remember the nickname? Am I looking for Little Red Riding Hood? <laughs> Go on here. All right, so what is South Carolina's nickname? What's the nickname? After yeah, Palm South trees? Carolina is called the Palmetto State. And that's after the palm trees I showed you. Okay? We have any questions? I have more to show you, but I'm going to stop there in case we have questions. It is beautiful. Yep. It is awesome. That's why I go there about every three weeks. It is great. It is fun. There's good food. Lots of fun. Lots of history. Questions? I can go on with a few other things if there are no questions, but I'll wait for a second. Hi, Miss Susan. Hi. Um, um, I have a question. Is that um, so um, in the Civil War um statement um, so um, it's the North, the South Carolina um, what is um the most famous um weapon that South Carolina used? To Pro probably the most famous weapon, Jay, was probably that submarine, the Hunley, that sunk because that's what they used to start the Civil War and attack a ship. Then after that, they used those cannons and the guns. Okay, so um, so is um, so like is um, North Carolina um, is North, I mean South Carolina and North Carolina the same state or there are um, different? They're, they're two. They're two different states. Yep. And in America, we have like North Dakota and South Dakota, North Carolina and South Carolina. They're all different states. Yep. Okay. After Thanks. Carolina and the Queen of England's daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks, Miss Susan. You're welcome. And Virginia is named after um, uh, Queen Virginia, and Georgia is named after King George. So lots of of English names. Cool fact. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. So we're talking about the Palmetto State and the palm trees. South Carolina got that nickname because of all the palmetto trees there are in South Carolina. These trees can also be called sable palms or cabbage palms, but in South Carolina especially, they're usually just referred to as palmetto trees. They can be massive trees. They can get up to 65 feet tall and they love the warm weather and the humidity, which is why South Carolina is such a great place for palmetto trees to grow. South Carolina isn't just called the Palmetto State because there are a lot of palmetto trees there. It's also called the Palmetto State because palmetto trees at one point actually helped the people of South Carolina in a battle during the American Revolution. In 1776, this guy, Colonel William Moultrie, built a fort out of the trunks of palmetto trees. And what's crazy is it worked. They're such sturdy trees. It made a great fort and they were able to successfully defend it against the British during the Revolutionary War. South Carolinians were like, hey, not only are these cool looking trees, but they kind of like helped save our lives here. And they were a big part of that battle. They're pretty cool. You know, we should be the Palmetto State. Oops, and it stopped. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed um, my presentation on South Carolina. I'm also going to do one next week on Snoopy next Saturday.